Hey guys, today we're going to talk about how we can schedule Teams meetings, um, both within Outlook and the Teams desktop app. So um, we're going to start in Outlook because that's probably what you are familiar with. So there's a couple ways that we can do this here. And to start um, with the integration, you're going to have a new Teams meeting button right built into the top of your screen. Um, and this is customizable, so if it doesn't show up, uh, you can change your settings. So you can click on that, and it's awesome because it's just going to populate all the Teams data right into your agenda. So this link will take them to the Teams meeting. If for some reason they don't, um, if they want to use dial-in, they can dial-in um, with the conference ID. So if they're on the go or if they don't have the Teams meeting app on their phone or what have you, um, it's automatically going to set the location of Teams. And it's automatically going to ask you who you would like to join, who's required, who's optional. So if I want to go ahead and make Sean and Tina my um, invites to this meeting, I can go ahead. I can tell who's available uh, right now and if they're away or not right now. If I want to look at who uh, their schedule for the rest of the day or the week, I can come up here and click scheduling assistant. And so what that'll do is show you the different times that we might all have availability together. So um, that's how one way you can do it within Teams or within Outlook, excuse me. The other way you can do it is um, by normally just, you know, clicking this new appointment meeting or as I like to do, sometimes I'll just double click in an area on my calendar and pull it up. And then again, um, it just asks for the title and location, but as soon as you hit that Teams meeting, it's gonna ask you who you wanna invite, and then it's gonna put the Teams location right here. You can still go ahead and add your agenda for this, and um, you know, type in or add in any files or attachments or anything like that, categorize it, all that good stuff. So um, that's how you do it within Outlook. Now I'd like to switch over to Teams. And on the left-hand side of Teams, um, you'll see this calendar option. So that's what I'm inside right here. And within here, I wanted to let you guys know, and similar to Outlook, um, but not everyone knows it's available in Teams, is over here on the right-hand side, I have this set to work week. When I'm on my work calendar, um, you know, and working, I, I like to just see Monday through Friday. Some people prefer different views. So I wanted to make that aware to you guys. So you can do the full week. You know, if you have something coming up on the weekends or pressing deadlines that you maybe want to be reminded about, um, however, you know, this is your calendar, however you want to use it. So you can come here and, you know, have the full week. You can, of course, you know, move out and look at next week, whether you're in the full week uh, view or the work week. And then some people I realize like to look at just their day to day. And so here we're on Monday, so I'm going to make sure we're looking at Wednesday. My calendar, we're looking at today. Again, you can look ahead at the next day to look at your different um, your different meetings for the rest of the day or the rest of the week. So that calendar view is available to you. I'm gonna uh, bop back over to the work week. And I'm gonna show you a couple different things here. So in the top right, you'll see two buttons, uh, one of which is meet now. So when I click that, that's really nice for on the fly meetings or, if you like to record videos, Teams, you can use for that. So I'm gonna show you guys, it's gonna to default to meeting with Christy Keating, my name. I can change the name of this for uh, whatever I'm doing. I can choose to join with my video or with my mic or have both off. Hit join now. And there's a few different things you can do here. I mean, you can go ahead and invite someone from the organization. I can go ahead and hit Sean. Oops, I don't wanna actually call him. Um, so I, um, I'm going to go back into that Oops, meet now, um, and join now. But my point is you can go in and you can add anyone to a call, um, within your organization, or you can go ahead and, you know, type a number and, you know, start typing whatever that is. The other thing you guys can do, you can share your screens here. Um, you can start recording, you can change your background. So there's different backgrounds in here um, that you can apply. I've also added in my own. I'm a sports fan, so I've got my New York Giants and Yankees fields. I like the beach, so for fun I threw in Jaws. I've got a pool side here. And then, you know, just some other cool fun ones um, 
that you can choose from. Um, the other thing you can do is you can chat with any participants that you've um, asked to join the meeting. You can raise your hand, which is a new functionality here. So if you have a large meeting and someone you want to have everyone on mute, you could ask people to raise their hands to be, um, you know, given permission to speak. And you could also show your device settings here. So right now I'm using the uh, the microphone and webcam that are built into my laptop, but if I wanted to put on headphones or if I wanted to add a new fancy webcam, uh, it'll ask you, you know, which ones that you want here and you can, and you can change that out as you, as you wish. Um, the other awesome thing about this is you can take some meeting notes. Um, so I was doing this before. You can go ahead in here and click take notes and it'll populate an area for you to take notes and then those notes will be shareable with everyone on the meeting. Um, and you know whoever you want to share with so test notes um, you can come here goals for today action items etc cetera, etc cetera. and then you'll be able to view those afterwards as well so that's an impromptu spontaneous meeting but let's look and as you can see when you hang up now you can look at the notes in here and those will live there um, we want to look at you know, creating meetings ahead of time, right? Just like what we were doing in Outlook. So with that, you can come up here to this purple new meeting button, click new meeting, and it looks similar to what you guys have seen in Outlook before. So we'll go ahead and type in our test. Um, you look here and see we want to have required attendees. Similar to Outlook, there is this optional button available. You have to click on it to show. I'm gonna go ahead and invite Tina as well. And what's cool about this is Tina's in red, so we know that Tina's not available if I wanted to meet right now at 12.30 as I have it. Um, it'll suggest times that Tina and Sean are both available based on their calendar integration, so I can come here and just click it, and now you see Tina is no longer red, she's gonna be available, and we can go ahead and schedule that meeting and assume that everyone will be able to join. You can turn on a recurrence or not, daily, weekly, monthly, however you'd like. You can customize it to maybe every other day. Maybe you wanna do every other day meetings until the end of June, so you can go ahead and end it the last Friday in June, hit every two days and hit save, um, and it'll let you know here, it's gonna occur every two days. Um, if you don't wanna have an end date, you can leave it as is. Um, I'm not gonna make this recurring, so I will go ahead and cancel that. The other thing is you can add it to a channel. So, um, say I want to go here and add this to the sales and marketing channel, I can come here, or team, and then put it in the general channel. I can do that. Um, and then uh, down here is where I can type the agenda, just as you can in um, Outlook. Um, you know, bold, italicized, you know, stylized, however you wish. In order to add an attachment here within Teams, it's going to be um, done by a link. So if you're using Teams, you're likely using Office, the rest of Office 365. So you can have um, your text display and then you can come here and for example sake, I'm just going to use our homepage. Once it recognizes that it's a link, you will have the insert button available for you to utilize and you can click there um, and then it'll show you your link in there and you can of course space it out so that it's easier to read. Um, also within here, just like we showed in Outlook, um, what's nice about Teams is it gives you the, the, the color coding here about if they're available, but sometimes if you have a lot of people, it can get a little bit much. So sometimes it might be just nice um, if they suggest something later today, but you don't want that, you're like, eh, maybe we'll look at Thursday or Friday. You can come here and now all of a sudden, oh, we both have one o'clock. You can go ahead and click on it. Um, What's nice is at the top, all attendees, it'll show you these gaps based on everyone's calendar, so you don't really have to look at every individual. And again, the suggested times will pop up here, which is really nice. So you can pop back over to details, be back in the details here. Um, I'm gonna just leave this as is and send it to Sean so that I could show you where within the channel it pops up. So on the left-hand side, you'll click back over to your Teams, leaving the calendar, and back into Sales and Marketing. And you can see the, uh, the Teams meeting that I just created is now here. And people can click on it and join right from there. 
they won't be able to edit it like this. That's only because I am the organizer here. So um, I'm going to head and also cancel this meeting now because it's um, it was just a test. And you, what's cool is you can, as you can see, I, I canceled it because it was a test. And I'm going to do the same thing here to not confuse anyone um, and cancel the meeting here for you guys. Um, let's see what else. The other thing I wanted to show you that's pretty cool is we'll hop over into our demo channel. And what you can do here is you can add a group calendar actually in a channel. And so I prefer just looking at my calendar, but if you wanted to look at like different group calendars, you can go ahead and click the more options over here on the right hand side, this ellipses, three dots. That's gonna be within your channel. And you can open it up in SharePoint. And within SharePoint, you can um, go over here to the side and click edit. So I'm on the left hand side here. And when you hover here, you're gonna have this plus button that shows up. So you click on that and from the options, you'll select the calendar option. And then you can grab that calendar link. And then I'm gonna leave SharePoint, get back into Teams. And what I'm going to do here is, um, now that I'm back in Teams, I can come over here, hit add a tab, click this website button, Title it calendar. I already, I've done this already. So I'm gonna just title it test. And then once it recognizes the link, I can go ahead and save that. And now at the top, you'll have a calendar showing right here. And so what's cool about that is you can go in and look at the, so right now it's populating my calendar. But if I wanted to turn that off and just look at sales and marketing, we have a sales sync every morning, that'll display there. Um, I can look at the senior leadership team. Um, I can look at, you know, the different uh, calendars that I have access to. So this will only populate calendars that you have access to. And the way that you can share your calendar is done in Outlook. So let's pop back over to Outlook. And from the home screen and Outlook here, you'll see at the top, there's this button here that says share calendar. And I'm gonna click on it and click calendar and look at the different permissions within my organization. So anyone in my organization can see when I'm busy. That simply means they just see something blocked off on my calendar. They don't see that this says POE for Pi. They don't say that this says invitation inbound marketers. They don't say, schedule blogs, but Danielle, someone I work with very, very regularly, as well as Jessica and Amanda, they can view all the details, uh, or they can view the um, titles and locations of my meetings. So that means they can see that I'm scheduling blogs. There's no, I just like using that as a placeholder, but for example, this one, um, I'm meeting with this woman, Molly, on Friday. If it was on site, um, they would be able to see, you know, where the address was that I was going, which is helpful, especially in like sales or client facing roles where, hey, I might be up in Carlsbad in North County. Um, and if someone, you know, in the morning and if someone wants to schedule something an hour later in downtown, well, that might be really hard for me to get there. So they know that that might not be possible. But if they see that my meeting is online or if my meeting is also downtown, that, you know, they can go ahead and schedule me. And then with Danielle, Danielle can see all my details, which means Danielle can actually open my calendar invite. And even if she's not a part of the meeting, she can see the agenda, she can see any file shared in there. And again, because her and I work so closely together, I'm comfortable with that. So it's totally up to you on how you would like to share your calendar within your organization. So you can change these permission levels at your discretion and at an individual basis on who you work with within your team. So. Hopefully that helps you guys with um, some of your calendar needs. There's a lot that can be done. Um, again, this is all permission settings up to you and your admin. So um, hopefully that helps you with your meetings and creating meetings within Teams. We love it. Um, if you have any questions on how we can help you uh, get started on Teams, we'd be happy to answer those for you. So 
Hope you found this helpful and please join us for our next training.